Hello and welcome. Welcome to this little video that's going to be, at least for me, uh, somewhat of a nostalgic trip. You see, lately I've been thinking about my childhood and thinking about uh, what toys I used to have and and play with. And one of the things that took up a great deal of my time was playing with action figures uh, from the Star Wars films. Uh, and the Star Wars toys brought me great joy and many, many hours of fun and entertainment. Regrettably, I disposed of all my Star Wars toys from back then, in my 30s, I, I think it was, believing that they were merely op occupying valuable space that could be used for something else, and, and that I would never use or show any interest for them again. Uh, and now, later on, I, I regretted doing that. However, fortunately, uh, a lot of people kept their old Star Wars toys. And uh, some are even selling them. And I found plenty of old Kenner figures on uh, online marketplaces. And uh, after looking around a bit, I found and I purchased a lot of mixed and pre-owned figures, which has just arrived today in this package. So I, I, I thought that we could have a look at them together. Though, before we open the package and have a look at the figures, uh, let me first give you a little context about the Kenner Company and their partnership with George Lucas. As you probably know, George Lucas premiered his initial Star Wars film back in 1977, initially simply titled Star Wars, and later on it would of course be assigned an episode number, being number four, and a subtitle, A New Hope. The year before, in 1976, Lucas signed a deal with the Kenner Toy Company to produce Star Wars toys. At the time, Kenner was a small company with no real experience producing action figures, but they were eager to take on the challenge. The first thing Kenner had to decide was the size of the figures. They couldn't make them as large as other popular brands like G.I. Joe and, and Barbie, because if they were that big, then the ships and vehicles and other accessories would simply be too big and impractical. So they ended up with what is now an industry standard, namely three and three quarters inches or 9.5 centimeters. And as the story goes, this height was quickly decided by Kenner's CEO who simply put out his thumb and forefinger, indicating a height when asked by the designers. Meanwhile, Kenna was actually stalled in finishing the designs and subsequently manufacturing the toys, as George Lucas was reluctant to provide them with the designs for the characters and vehicles in the film before it premiered in May 1977. He feared that the competitors in film and television industry 
would plagiarize his creations if the designs were leaked. As a result, the toys weren't ready when the film hit the theaters, and they were not even ready for the lucrative Christmas market the same year. So, when Christmas came in uh, 1977, Kenner ended up selling what they called uh, the Early Bird Certificate Package, which simply was an empty package, uh, an empty box with the promise that the actual figures would be delivered by mail at a later date, rather than that the kids actually got the figures. And the, the later date was in the spring of 1978, when Kenner finally started to send out the first figures. So actually a pretty long time after the release of the film. Nevertheless, the toys were immensely popular. And as soon as they hit the stores, they were pulled from the shelves by eager customers. Children and adults alike. And the sales just kept on going boosted by each subsequent film in the original trilogy. However, the release of Return of the Jedi in 1983 marked the end of a significant era for the Star Wars franchise, and it also signaled the beginning of a gradual decline in the public interest for Star Wars. So, as a result, the sales of Kenner Star Wars toys began to decline steadily. Of course, when the prequel trilogy was released, The Phantom Menace in 1999, the sales figures for Star Wars toys started to increase. But by that time, Kenner had become a subsidiary in Hasbro. So for now, I'll end the history lesson, as this video is about the old Kenner figures from the original trilogy. Okay, so let's uh, open up the package and see what we have. Let's have a look at them one at a time. So, the 
this is, as you probably know, C. Tribio, one of the most iconic characters from the films. The protocol droid who famously know more than six million forms of communication but with a rather paranoid and worrisome outlook on existence. So, what date will we have here? Or rather year? Yeah, this is 1982. So this is the version from The Empire Strikes Back which uh, replaced the one from A New Hope. And this one should have removable limbs. Yeah, so his arms and legs can be removed. Not, th not something you should do too much, which I did when I was a kid, uh, which ended up in him having very loose limbs, so I'm not going to do this now either. But the idea was that uh, you could remove his limbs and then you could put him in a plastic bag, I think it's here. Yeah, so in the film Chewbacca carries C. Tribio on his back in in a bag uh, after C. Tribio was blown apart by stormtroopers and Chewbacca started assembling him again. So it's the same idea here, you can take off his limbs and then put him in, in this bag and put this ba bag o on Chewbacca's back. I believe this version also came in different colors. I think this is more s the more silver colored one, the other one being more golden. Yeah, I had this when I was a kid, as mentioned, and I got it a few days after uh, the first film was shown on television. I was blown back, blown away by that first movie I saw. And from that point on, Star Wars became a big part of my life. Yeah. His head is a little loose, but else he is in pretty pretty good condition, I think. Alright, let's put him aside and have a look at the next figure. Tribus 
companion and like C Tribu he appears in in all the films in the Star Wars saga or Skywalker saga I should say he is of course a lot bolder and I guess more courageous and heroic in, than um, C. Tribio. This version is from um, The Empire Strikes Back. The reason I know that is because of this sensor scope, which was introduced in this figure that replaced the one from uh, A New Hope which didn't have the sensor scope I don't think Arto used the sensor scope in A New Hope so it was something they added after the Empire Strikes Back but uh, I think a fun fact is that the barrel is actually yeah, it's since 1977 the barrel of the figure is the same sculpt they used from for the first figure from A New Hope. And of course the condition of this is... It has been used by some kid. Which is of course the reason for the existence of these figures. But it is rather dirty here in the legs and the stickers are pretty worn and dirty as well. Yeah. I had this figure when I was a kid as well. And I was very fond of both R2D2 and C Tribio. I think being a kid I might have identified more with the droids than with the humans um, in the films because they I guess they are a little more child like and Innocent and, of course, a comic relief. So, how about let's have a look at the next one. This is Regis, I believe it's pronounced. Um, and Regis is from the species Gran, which is a species that has three eyes, as you can see. This snouty nose thingy and mouth and some antenna on top of their head. Well, it's supposed to be antenna, right? I'm not sure it looks like antennas, but... Yeah, and these winged ears and... And Regis is, of course, from... Return of the Jedi. From Jabba's palace. Where he works as a, a frog dog watcher for Jabba. It's a little dirty up here and I think the paint has worn off here on the tip of his eyes. 
I don't think that's supposed to be pupils. I think it has one of. Yeah. A little bit of miscoloration up here. Not much. His weapon is missing, and I remember his weapon being rather strange looking. And as a kid I never really figured out if it was a a rifle of some sort or if it was a, a melee weapon. But yeah, now I think it was supposed to be a rifle. I think the figure is a little bit strangely proportioned with an oversized head and extremely oversized hands. Yeah. Right, let's have a look at the next one. Oh, there's a paint chip up here as well. suited for the harsh and cold environment of Hoth, or other cold environments for that matter, than in their normal stormtrooper gear, as this has additional heating and, and so on, um, and well, the figure is, of course, from the film The Empire Strikes Back, where the Empire attacks the rebel base on, on Hoth, the frozen ice planet. It's pretty dirty. Uh, this one, I think it needs some cleaning. And of course, which is the case of many of the figures from back then, the, the white plastic has turned a bit yellow. He's supposed to have a rifle, which is not part of the slot. And also a cape going down behind him from his waist, which should be fastened here in these hooks. I think it's a cool figure, I like Stormtrooper figures, but yeah, in need of some cleaning. His legs are a little loose. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. in her 
push the skies, which she used to gain access to Jabba's palace, posing as the bounty hunter Bush that supposedly had captured uh, Chewbacca. I don't know if it was officially a part of the story when they made Return of the Jedi that she posed as this actually known bounty hunter that was killed by the Black Sun crime syndicate or or if that was something that was added to the story later when when Shadows of the Empire, the novel, came out, which takes place uh, between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Nevertheless, I think it's, I think it's canon now, part of the official story. She's, she's a bit filthy here in the recesses, and her hair is, the paint on her hair is a bit chipped off, and here on the on the hands, which is of course rather common that these more raised areas on the figures have been where the paint has been chipped off when the figures have seen some actions. as well. Anyway, this is probably one of my favorite Leia versions. I think it's because this is the one where she's the least, I would say, perhaps ladylike or doll, doll-like. But I also think it's a a nice, a cool looking costume, this bush outfit. She's supposed to have a a helmet covering covering her face and a staff weapon of some sort, which is not, which is not here. See if I can find some of these accessories online later on. Okay. Cool. Let's have a look at the next one. He's also supposed to have a trench coat, 
with camouflage which he wears on the indoor moon. This is missing and his plaster is also missing. The paint is a bit worn on this one, again in the hair section and also here on the hands, here where his plaster has probably been put in and taken out many times. Some dirt on his face and yeah, the feet. So the paint has come up here as well. Bottom. This is my second favorite Han Solo figure. I had this as a child as well. Uh, the one from The Empire Strikes Back, where he is he, in his, I think it's called Bespin outfit, being my favorite Han Solo figure. Let's put him aside and have a look at the next one. This is an ATST driver or ATST pilot from Return of the Jedi. And as the name implies, he's the, the driver or pilot of, of the ATST vehicle. ATST being an acronym for All Terrain Scout Transport. It's a rather simple outfit, I guess, but I think it's a nice figure. I'm not sure why, but I, I remember this was one of the figures I was more fond of than when I was a kid. I'm not sure why, but... There you go. He's supposed to have a gun. A blaster. It's not here. He's a bit... a bit dirty, and he... again... A figure with paint that has come off on the raised areas that has seen some action. Yes, and the imperial emblems here on the side of his shoulders are also pretty worn and almost gone. Nevertheless, like the other figures, this brings back some fun memories. This is Lando Calrissian in his undercover. 
Harbour outfit, which he used to infiltrate Jabba the Hutt's palace in Return of the Jedi. Disguised as this skiff guard. Yeah. And there's some paint that has come off again here. And I guess he's also a little filthy, dirty here and there. Could use a bath. He's of course supposed to have a helmet and a vibro axe. And none of them are here in this lot. I like this figure, it's uh, I think it's well proportioned, uh, and it has a somewhat of a nice similarity to Billy D. Williams, uh, his actual appearance at the time and in the movie. And uh, I think it's a nice outfit, costume, if you will. I'm not sure if I had this figure when I was a kid or one of my friends had. I certainly remember it from back then, but yeah. His limbs are a bit loose, but not not much. Anyway. Let's put him aside. Have a look at the next one. supposed to have a belt and also a staff. Which again is not here. I'm not sure that the one I had when I was a kid has had these uh, cuts or slits in the And this coat on the arms. But I remember this figure fondly. I think the character is interesting and I think they should have used him more in the movies, but of course, he wasn't that important for the main plot, but I think it was an interesting character, the few scenes he was in. Um, and I guess that's also why I like the figure, but I think it's a nice figure. 
especially if he had these accessories. Of course, he might be a bit without the, this coat. He would be a bit boring, I guess. This turquoise outfit he has on. Yeah, again, some paint has come off, and. It's a bit dirty here and there. See if we can get that off. I think this coat is a little bit of a different material than the one I had. I remember it being more fluffy and also perhaps a bit more gray than brown, but not sure. Right. Let's have a look at the next one. Okay, let's see. Okay, this has seen some. I guess. It's of course Han Solo from A New Hope. This is one of the versions with a large head. The first one they made had a, a head that was well, it was smaller, too small. And then they made this new one, which perhaps is a little too big. But, yeah, there you go. I'm not sure why his condition is like this. Maybe he's just been played with a lot, but he's really in bad condition. It's not really one of my favorite figures. Uh, perhaps even the opposite. One of my, if not the least favorite figure. I think he's badly designed and proportioned. Of course, it's still Han Solo, and Han Solo is my favorite character from the movies, so I guess he needs to be part of the collection. His legs are very loose. Yeah, really bad condition. Let's hurry on to the next one. So this is of course an Evoc. It's Chief Chirpa, I think it's pronounced. Um, and he's, of course, from Return of the Jedi. From Endor, where a big part of the film took place. I think there were two versions of this figure. One with a more grayish, whitish fur and one that 
they were more brown, or at least darker. I think this is more grey-white, so that might be that version. He's supposed to have a, a hood and a staff, which is not here. Paint has come off a lot on, on this one, I think. This black paint for his belt and for this necklace. And it's a bit dirty here and there. As the name implies, he's chief of the elders of the Ewok tribe. Uh, the, the, the Ewok tribe that helped the rebels uh, destroy the generator. Uh, the generators for the Dead Star's deflector shield on Endor. Let's look at the next one. Okay, so here we have the princess once again. Princess Leia Organa. This time in her Endor outfit for the Endor mission where the heroes meet the Ewoks and destroy the generators on the Endor moon in the Return of the Jedi. She is supposed to wear a, a combat poncho um, camouflaged and a belt holding it in place around her waist uh, and also a helmet and a plaster uh, none of it is here in the in the lot i bought her head is a bit tiny i think perhaps in order to have the helmet fit over it, or to keep the helmet small enough. And her hands are also a bit tiny, I think. Or at least they are sculpted, sculpted in such a way that it's, it's difficult. I remember it being difficult for her to hold anything in her hand, even her own blaster. But the figure is in somewhat of a good condition, I think. Not many paint chips, and not much dirt. Maybe the kid who owned her didn't play with this figure as that much. Perhaps a bit like me, playing more with Han Solo and Luke. Everything seems to be in order. Sith Lord, M. 
Emperor Palpatine, or the Emperor, which I think was just his name in The Return of the Jedi, or, yeah, in the original trilogy. I think it was only later that the name Palpatine was, at least for the, to the public, was known. I believe there were two versions of the figure with, with his hands being more detailed than one. I think this is the one where the hands are more detailed than the other one, but actually I'm not sure. He is a bit dirty and has some paint chips on the erased areas. I actually think that this design, if you like, is a bit underwhelming uh, for this figure. A little bit boring, perhaps. Um, I think with, if they had made a, a a cloak, or what it's called, more like Bib Fortuna, where it would be an actual fabric of some sort. Uh, would have made it more interesting. But nevertheless, of course, it is the Emperor. So uh, he's such a central part of the story, I guess, that he needs to be in the collection. And of course, he has a cane, which is not here in the in the lot I bought. Yeah. Right. Let's have a look at the next one. is an Imperial Trooper, only briefly seen a couple of times in The Empire Strikes Back. It is uh, the driver, pilot, if you will, of the all-terrain armored vehicle, or at and -AT. Um, uh, so therefore he's also named AT-AT -AT Driver. I think this is another nicely designed figure. Well, mostly perhaps the upper part of, of the guy, while the lower part is perhaps a bit boring. I remember I was actually rather intrigued when I first encountered uh, this figure when I was a kid. I, I think a, a friend has it in his collection before I got it myself. Um, and I was intrigued because obviously this was some sort of stormtrooper. But as I only had seen A New Hope at the time. Um, I didn't know from where this, this Stormtrooper or, yeah, this Trooper originated. The 
this trooper with cool design. Well, yeah, he intrigued me a little. Yeah, this one really brings back some memories. Anyway, he is missing a rifle. Uh, on a strap. And I, I think I remember that he could actually, actually not hold the rifle. Perhaps because of the strap being in the way, but... Yeah. Anyway. He is... A little worn here and there, with some paint that has come off, and his emblems up here. And a, a bit of dirt here and there. Yeah, let's have a look at the next one. Yeah, this humanoid pig is a Gamorian guard from Jabba the Hutt's palace. Um, the Gamorian species isn't very bright, solving most of their problems or issues with brute force. Yeah, and he's of course from Return of the Jedi. I think this is uh, one of uh, these alien species that does not feel that alien because, well, it is a pig, right? As we know it from Earth. So, yeah, he's supposed to have an axe. A little of the paint has come off here on his sandals and on his horns, teeth, as usual, the more protruding areas. Besides that, he is in an okay condition. It looks like this arm is a little less green than the other part. A little more grey. So, probably some different plastic. Let's have a look at the next one. So this is a rebel soldier in Hoth battle gear. I believe, from, uh, well, from The Empire Strikes Back, from the first half of that film, and from the Battle of Hot the sequence, I think, prominently, where the Empire overwhelms the the rebel space, the rebel base on half echo base. He's supposed to have a blaster. I believe it's called a, a Bespin blaster, which was kind of the go to blaster for most of the figures. Well, a lot of the figures in the Empire Strikes Back line, which of course doesn't really make sense as. Well, he's on Hoth and not on Bespin, and 
at least not in the films he didn't these these soldiers didn't go to Bespin. He has some paint that has come off here and there on his belt and boots and on this little don't know what this is on his helmet. A little bit of miscoloration here. Huh? Paint chip there. I think this is somewhat of a boring figure actually. Um, and never, it was never one of my favorites. His arm is a bit loose. Alright. So these are actually the last figure, or the last two figures, but as you can see, they are, well, they are the same figure. It's Klaatu from The Return of the Jedi. For this reptilian species called Niktu. And I think this subspecies green nick too. Um, and yeah, at the time of Return of the Jedi, he is uh, working for Jabba the Hutt. Um, I think according to canon, his main job was to repair and maintain Jabba's skiffs. As you can see, his, the color of his face is a bit different in these two. One being more dark green and one perhaps a little well, not blue, but at least light, lighter. I think this one's hands are also more green, perhaps a little, and the vest is also a bit, a bit different brown color. Perhaps this is a, a perfect example of the figures not being identical. Uh, and as you can see, this one has a skirt which. This one is also supposed to have, but obviously it's, it's missing. And he's also supposed to have a, a Viper Axe. Yeah, I remember I had this figure as a kid. Not one of my favorites, but I remember it clearly. Let's have a look at the few accessories that's in the back. Accessories. This hat and his stuff. Right. Let's 
So this is this is a breathing mask from the the vehicle from a uh, rebel transport ship. Um, which I actually also think doubled as a figure case. But I've never seen this in real life before. So, yeah, a breeding mask. That yeah, can be put on the figure like that, and then... Well, slips around a bit, but then tied behind the head. And this is also from the Rebel Transport Ship vehicle. A backpack of some sort. So, something like this. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not going to tie it up for now, but that was the idea. So, the accessories are not really for any of these figures, but here we go. when I was a kid. I'm not sure. Some of them, a few of them, might have been my friends who owned them. But I clearly remember them all from when I was a kid. And I think it, it was uh, nice to revisit my childhood in this way and have a look and feel of these figures once again. And I think that even though they are 35 to 40 years old and obviously have been played with. I think they are in okay condition. Of course, they are all missing their weapons and other accessories, but I'll see if I can replace them. I've already seen listings online with both original and reproduced weapons. I, I guess it's generally easy to find these old figures without their original equipment uh, than it is to find them complete. I think kids have a tendency to not take that good care of their toys and these tiny accessories they a lot of them have probably gotten lost on the way. I remember I, I myself lost a lot of my own figures, equipment. Anyway, the next step with these figures will be to clean them and then put them in bags, I think. Possibly put some on display here in my home, but I will see. And actually, I'm also considering touching up the paintwork here and there on some of them, where it has worn off. Not sure yet, and it's probably also a big no-go for real and serious collectors, but... Well, I'm... I'm mostly in it for the nostalgia, and not so much to have everything be original and it, as it were. Let's see. But for now I will say thank you for watching this video, and if you have any comments or feedback or 
well, corrections for my ramblings on the on the lore. And please leave me a comment. And then perhaps I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.